Please and spell your name for the court reporter. My name is Aubrey Wisniewski, A-U-B-R-E-Y-W-I-S-N-I-E-W-S-K-I. And how are you currently employed, ma'am? I work at a restaurant in Appleton, Wisconsin. All right. And how long have you worked there? I've worked there about two months. All right. And were you employed in March of 2018? Yes. How were you employed in March of 2018? I worked at Ray C. Delaney's Coffee Lounge in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And did you have any specific position at Racy's? I started as just a barista at first and then became a manager and was the manager for three years. All right. And were you the manager as of March of 2018? Yes, I was. All right. Now, uh, Ms. Wisniewski, uh, as the manager in March of 2018, what were your general duties? I made the schedule. I stocked when after hours. Um, I just had to control the employees, really. Okay. And... Uh, Were you the one who would have scheduled uh, the employees that would have been working on March 22nd of 2018? Yes, it was. Right. And uh, do you recall who was scheduled to work that day? I don't recall offhand. All right. Uh, would your memory have been um, better at the time uh, when you were interviewed in March of 2018? Yes. All right. And do you think reviewing a report of the interview that was conducted of you in March of 2018 would refresh your memory as to who is employed? Yes. All right. May I approach your honor? You What's that? No, I'm talking about myself. I'm just showing you a document. I want you to take a look at it for a second. Then I'm going to take it away and ask if it refreshes your memory as to who was working on that particular day. Okay. Does that refresh your memory? As it does. To who was working on March 22nd, 2018? It does. Okay. Who was working on that day? According to that, it says Ariel was next. Objection, nasty. objection. That's hearsay. If her memory is actually right. refreshed, that's not. All right, sustained right. in. Right. Did, do you remember it at this point in time? My sister. Now that it's away, do you have independent, Does do you remember who was working? If you don't, that's fine. I don't. Okay, that's fine. Was your memory good at the time that you were interviewed by law enforcement? Yes. And did you provide them with accurate information at that point in time? I did. All right. And do you have any reason to believe that the information in the report that you saw is inaccurate as to what happened? I don't. What you told them? I don't. Are you uh, familiar with uh, Alex Woodworth, or were you familiar with him? Yes, I was. How did you become familiar with Alex Woodworth? He was hired on as an employee at Racy's while I was working there by another manager. Right. Did you become familiar with him before he was hired? Yes, he was a regular before he was hired. All right. And how long uh, approximately before Alex's death in March of 2018 was he hired to work at Racy's? About a year and some change. Okay. And uh, what, when, how would you describe Alex as a person? Objection. I know 404. Your Honor, I believe it goes. Uh, how, what, shall we approach? All right, go ahead. Ms. Wisniewski, uh, specifically, 
as to uh, Alex's, uh, can you tell us whether or not you would describe him as a peaceful person, a violent person, something in between? I would say I never saw him get angry once. Right. And do you ever see him do anything that would be considered violent? No. Did you ever see him, hear him discuss violence or an interest in violence? Never. Do you recall uh, when the last time that you saw Alex was approximately? It was about three days before he passed. And how was he at that point in time? He seemed himself. All right. Was he upbeat or was he down, depressed? I can't recall the okay. exact emotion. Were you familiar with the defendant in this case? No, not very much. Okay. Did you ever see her in races? Yes, just as a regular. All right. And uh, would you ever give her uh, a free coffee while she was there? Check. I, Irrelevant. I had before, but mostly um, other employees would do so. Okay. And how long uh, prior to his death, I know you said that Alex worked at Racy's for a year and change uh, before his death. How long did you know him? How long had he been coming in? Oh, probably about two and a half years I knew him. And when you say he was a regular, what do you mean by that? They're almost daily. Okay. Is that even before he started to work there? Even after he started to work there. All right. And when he would come, would he stay for a couple minutes? A Hours. Couple, I'm sorry? Hours. All right. And what would he do while he was there? He was mostly on his computer watching shows or just sitting in a corner by himself, maybe reading. Okay. Is that something that's unusual for people to be there long periods of time? No, not at irrelevant. All. Overruled. And do you see uh, the individual who you talked about as being the defendant in court here today? Yes. Could you point her out by where she's seated and what she's wearing? To the left of Aaron Nelson. Um, wearing glasses and a pink blazer. To your left? Yeah, my left. All right. The record will reflect that the witnesses identified uh, the defendant, Ms. McCandless. I don't have any other questions for Ms. Wisniewski. Okay. Any cross-examination? Yes, please. Ms. Wisniewski? Did I pronounce Wisniewski? that? Wisniewski. Wisniewski. Um, Were you at Racy's on March 22nd? I was not. Um, Alex was a friend of yours? Yes. You liked him? Yes. Um, do you know who Jason Mengel is? Yes. Fair to say he's not a friend of yours. Right. He's someone you, for lack of a better term, didn't like. Had indifferent feelings. You've talked to the police before about this, is that right? Yes. And in those talks with the police, as you already went through, you you were honest with them? Yes. You told them what you felt? Yes. You told them what you saw? Yes. And this was back a year and a half ago, around March of 2018 and April of 2018, when you were meeting with the police. Is that right? Right. And when you met with the police back then, you told them about your feelings for Jason Mengel, right? Right. I'm sorry, objection. It was, was, what is the objection? Character evidence, Your Honor, 90404 again. 90616 bias. All right, I'm going to overrule the objection. Go ahead, you can answer. Thank you. Um, so 
back in April of 2018, when you spoke with the police, you were talking to them about Jason Mengel, right? Right. And you told them then that you disliked Jason. Agreed. Objection relevance. I do not recall, Hold but on. he's don't, not a friend. Please don't answer until I've ruled on the objection. So I think you've already answered it. Um, I'm going to overrule the objection so the answer will stand. Go ahead, Mr. Nelson. Okay. And I would ask that Mr. Nelson please speak into the microphone. And I'm having some difficulty hearing him, so if he could please speak into the microphone. All right. Well, why don't you move it a little bit closer there? Thank you. At this point, I did not hear because there was crosstalk what her answer was. Could the, Your Honor or the court reporter read that back? Yeah. Go ahead. You can. You just want her answer? Yes, please. She said, I don't recall, but he's not a friend. Fair to say that you told the police you've never liked Jason. Objection, Your Honor. It's not bias of a witness. The, it has to be, and this is 906.16, it has to be for purposes of attacking the credibility of a witness, evidence of bias, prejudice, or interest of the witness Judge or against any party in have, cases. Well, we can only have one talk at a time. Are we going to have speaking objections? I didn't know that we were going to do speaking objections in front of the jury. All right. Well, I, I also need my my statute book if somebody has it. So, I'll grab. But I, frankly, I, I don't think we need to have an extensive discussion on this. I, I do believe it goes. Thank you to bias of the witness. So I'm going to overrule the objection. Thank you. What I was asking Aubrey. When you spoke with the police back in the spring of 2018, you told them you never liked Jason. Agreed? Agreed. You knew at that point that this young lady next to me, Ezra McCandless, was dating Jason, the man you didn't like. Agreed? I didn't believe they were together at that time. Okay. You knew that at some point, Ezra McCandless was dating Jason Mangle, the man you didn't like. Agreed? Objection, relevance. And uh, what is the relevance? Um, can we approach? I mean, I'm. All right, let's do a sidebar. I don't want to have the jury going in and out. Every other question here. You spoke with Alex about his relationships. Agreed? Not often. You had heard from Alex that he was dating a boy. No, I didn't. Did he tell you that he had a boy that was trans that he was dating? My sister told me. So you learned that he was dating a boy. Correct. Well, Your Honor, I guess I'm going to object to the double hearsay at this point. So. When you spoke with the police, you told them that you spoke with Alex about Alex had always talked about having a a relationship with a trans male. Is that what you told the police? I don't recall. And you told the police that you later found out that the trans male that Alex had been talking about dating was Ezra McCandless. Okay. Yes? I don't recall. And this trans boy that Alex said that he was dating he was bragging about how much sex he was having with that boy. I don't recall. He was telling you that he was tired from all of the sex that he had with the boy. I don't believe that was me. And you didn't know at the time when Alex was alive that the trans boy that he was referring to was Ezra McCandless, the woman next to me, did you? You didn't I don't know that, recall. Did you? Alex was secretive about his relationship with Ezra? Right. He didn't tell anybody else about that, did he? He told my sister and my sister told me. Okay. But he wasn't open about that. Agreed? Not with me. Um, did you learn about other secrets that Alex kept? <coughs> Objection, relevant. I don't Stain. know what that means. Are you familiar with Alex's journals I knew that he wrote 
Did he ever share what his writings were about? Objection, relevance. I'm going to overrule on that one. Did he ever share what his writings were about? Um, I have a few of his school writings that I've kept, but other than that, I didn't read his journals, no. Okay. I wouldn't let him read mine. What was the... I wouldn't let him read mine. They were private, right? Right. They were, in some ways, secret, right? Sure. And they were only to be shared with certain people as some secrets are. Ob objection, Your Honor. Uh, I'm going to sustain the calls for speculation. Testifying. And so, if you just, I'm going to sustain. We'll leave it there. Go ahead, Mr. Nelson, with the next question. You're not, you're not familiar with his private secret journal writings. Agreed? Objection That's asked and that. answered. Sustained. Those are the only questions. Thank you. Any redirect? None, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Wisniewski. You may step down. And uh, is there any reason she cannot be excused? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Ms. Wisniewski, you're free to go. Thank you. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe that there are any additional witnesses today. We are going to uh, begin with testimony tomorrow morning at 8.30. So we want you back here early enough to be ready to go at 8.30. Um, we'll try to start right on time. Um, I'd also, again, want to admonish you again. It's very, very important that you not read anything about this case or watch any television coverage or listen to anything on the radio regarding this coverage or anything on the Internet. Do not do any research. Uh, or look at anything on social media. To be on the safe side, maybe you just stay away from, from that, find something else to look at or read or listen to, as it, uh, again, it's very important uh, that you as members of the jury don't contaminate yourselves with any other information that, as I gave you that instruction yesterday, uh, that uh, may confuse you or conflate what you hear uh, here in court. You must decide this case based on the evidence received in this uh, proceeding and, uh, and not base it on any other information. Don't do any other research. Discuss the case among yourselves or with anyone else. Um, and, uh, and with that, um, I guess we're going to excuse you for the evening. Okay. All rise. Is it okay if I stand, Judge? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I just want to take up, I guess, in reverse order, the most recent sidebar, 423, during Ms. Wisniewski's testimony. Um, I don't know, counsel, I don't remember whose objection it was, but um, I believe that it was Mr. DeFore's objection. Um, and uh, Mr. Nelson, do you want to be heard on that, make a record? Uh, no, Judge, I think, I think uh, I'm not sure which side, I think I have, Objected at one point about recorded recollection, and Your Honor sustained that. And okay, I'll get to that one. I'll get to oh. that one next. But okay, sorry. And then I believe the state objected to relevancy. We had a sidebar. We both made arguments. Your Honor, my understanding was ruled that it was irrelevant. All right, I, I believe I sustained sustained the objection um, where Mr. Nelson was going into the relationship and the dislike of Mr. Mangle and his connection to uh, the defendant, Ms. McCandless. And uh, before it went any further, the court sustained that objection. And as I understand it, part of the argument by the state was that um, Ms. Wisniewski was not aware of the relationship between Mr. Uh, Mangle and Ms. McCandless, and therefore she could not have been biased by um, the fact that Miss McCandless was dating Mr. Mangal. That's my recollection of that sidebar. Mr. Dufour, anything you want to put on the record regarding that sidebar? I believe the court has accurately uh, summarized that sidebar, Your Honor. All right, we had a sidebar at 411, uh, again, where the court had uh, sustained uh, the objection that was made. And I would have to look back on that one. Anyone want to make a record with respect to that? I believe the if that was by that the was same. the recorded recollection. One that was recorded matter, recollection. And we All right. withdrew the question and withdrew the matter. So, all right. And just for the record, uh, the court agreed with the defense that there was a police report of an officer, and although he recorded 
what the witness said. It was not the recorded recollection made by Ms. Wisniewski herself. It wasn't her own recording or her own notes of what had occurred, so the court sustained the objection on that ground. As it relates to the sidebar at 413, um, frankly, uh, the uh, defense essentially made the objection to the open-ended question about character, and uh, Mr. Dufour agreed to be more pointed in his questioning to the specific issue of a, a character for peacefulness or violence, and uh, as I recall things. Anything you would like to state further with respect to that, Mr. Nelson? No, Judge. Okay, and uh, Mr. Dufour? Nothing. Okay. All right, then. Any other issues related to uh, the last two witnesses that counsel would like to put on the record? Nothing. Nothing from the All right. state. Um, now, the issue uh, was brought up by uh, the defense with respect to the camera placement. Yes. Um, so do you, why don't you go ahead, Mr. Nelson, if you would just... Uh, just make a record of what your objection is or what your request is. Uh, there's a camera, I don't know, Your Honor, eight feet uh, directly in front of Ms. McCandless. <coughs> Essentially, if she looks to Your Honor, she's looking straight at the camera between its position between uh, her and Your Honor. Uh, and I believe that camera is focused on her almost exclusively, entirely, the entire time. Um, I've not been paying attention to CourtTV.com or any of the other, I've been here working, but what I've heard secondhand is is that there's lots of commentary upon uh, Ms. McCandless's uh, allegedly staring into said camera, which is again where someone would naturally look in court when they're sitting at this table and looking forward. And so our request is that that camera be moved um, so as to be not in Ms. McCandless's direct view, so she cannot be accused of, I don't know, pandering to the camera or something like that when it's literally in front of her face. All right, well, here's the situation. The court, the court approved the camera placement. It's consistent with the media order. Um, this is a public trial. It essentially captures what it is that the court, the view from the bench, basically, um, I haven't seen it. I haven't watched it. Um, and uh, so uh, the people, the jury should not be looking at the court TV, the people that would be deciding in this case. And uh, again, I accommodated the objections that were made about court TV. Maybe this is one of those, uh, one of those things that uh, the defense hadn't thought of. Um, but at this point, um, I, yeah, I'm not going to change it. Because, again, it, it, the camera can be zoomed in. It can be, as I understand, it could be a wider angle. Um, but we have, again, uh, allowed this coverage. And uh, the camera doesn't move. It's not making any noise. And, uh, and frankly, if you can ignore the camera, uh, if it's causing some other problems, I guess I'll revisit that. Um, I'll note your objection. But again, um, this is not something, you know, if the jury is following the instructions of the court, they will not be seeing this, nor will they be seeing the commentary. And uh, so uh, I'm just I'm going to leave it, leave it where it is. Okay. All right. So noted. Anything else that uh, counsel wants to take up before we adjourn for the evening? I don't think this is what I would ask, and, and I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson, I invited you to speak, and then I cut you off. But, um, Ms. Nodoff, do you have uh, an order of witnesses tomorrow? And the question is... I, I have it, Your Honor, so I could... Okay, well, I'd like to have some idea, because, it, right. first of all, is there are there any witnesses that we have had some uh, provisional rulings on, or that we need, uh, that haven't been made, that need to be addressed before these witnesses testify? All right. Well, let me just, I'll go through who we are intending to call tomorrow. Uh, Kyle DeVries. And I will be handling Kyle DeVries' direct exam. And he's uh, Wisconsin State Patrol, and that's basically he's, for He's, a he's the rec reconstruction expert who did the scene diagramming and so forth. Uh, Katie Hoffmeyer, 
uh, who is from the crime lab. She was part of the crime scene response team. Uh, Assistant Attorney General Hahn will be handling his, uh, her direct. Uh, I'm not sure about Carissa Wobler. We're waiting to hear from Carissa Wobler, W-O-B-L-E-R. We're waiting to hear. Uh, another, another member of our office uh, was using Ms. Wobler uh, in uh, a trial she's doing in Stevens Point, and I wasn't sure she was ha having her testify today or tomorrow. I emailed to find out for sure which day they were using her. Uh, if it was today, then we're going to have her testify tomorrow. If not, we'll have her testify pro an, a, a day or two from now. Uh, so she may testify. And that's a crime lab person? Yes, yeah, she's from the crime lab. She is the uh, latent print examiner. Uh, Samantha Cobbs will testify. That would be uh, Ms. Nodolf. Uh, Allison Kexel, also Ms. Nodolf. Uh, Brianna Larson. Brianna is B-R-I-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. And Larson is L-A-R-S-O-N. Uh, that would be Ms. Nodolf. Uh, court, K-O-R-T, Fox. Uh, I will be handling his direct. <coughs> Ariel uh, Wisniewski, uh, that's Ms. Nodolf. Max Martinson, uh, that would be uh, Assistant Attorney General Hahn. Uh, David Studing, S-T, actually I believe he pronounces Stoiding, S-T-E-U-D-I-N-G. Uh, I will be handling his direct. And finally, uh, Paul Zakau, Z-A-C-H-A-U, and that will be Assistant Attorney General Hahn. I believe we should be able to get through all of those, Your Honor, tomorrow. All right. You think that would fill the day? I think that will fill the day. All right. And, uh, okay. Judge, I'll be, I think I'm handling all of those uh, witnesses, uh, starting with witness for uh, Samantha Cobbs, uh, we're starting to get into citizen witnesses, and before those citizen witnesses testify, I'd like to take up uh, the matter of character evidence. I'm not prepared to do that now. I want to consult with Ms. Vishni about it. I suspect that that's going to probably happen sometime, and certainly after the first morning break, if not in the afternoon. But um, could you give me a heads up so I have, you know, can prepare? What, uh, what it's what more of the general questions that were asked today about. I think they can ask one. Again, I'm not prepared. Uh, what is his character for peacefulness? And that's the extent of it. I don't think they get to go into all of these specific instances or lack of instances, but that's what I want to be heard on. If there's character evidence of Alex regarding his peacefulness, how that needs to be contained as opposed to just can continually going on again. So we'd like to make arguments tomorrow about that. I'm not prepared to do that today. Okay. Well, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Ms. Vishni, you look like you have something to say. I'll pose it till tomorrow. All right. Okay. Oh, except that I'm a little confused because I thought that we were starting court on Wednesdays. Well, we were, but uh, Judge Smeltzer has uh, graciously uh, offered to, to take treatment court tomorrow. So, uh, but I will plan it. We wanted to have continuity on treatment court, but I will be doing it, go back to that. We'll do it at 9.30 on Wednesdays the next two weeks. Okay? Thank you. All right. Anything further tonight? Okay. Nothing. We'll be in recess. Bond will continue. That's all for today. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.